Hold it, hold it, no dancing, hold it, freeze. As usual, I have not been given permission, even though I've written the lead singer of Thunder to use Love Walked In. Uh, feel free, all you yet come oners or anybody, just to go ahead and contact the band. We must be given permission to play this song. If anything, we're creating downloads, and if that puts money in this band's pocket, then I'm happy. Thunder cannot be played, only started for like three seconds on the Yet Come On show on YouTube. That's just the rules, boys and girls. So if you're watching, you're frustrated. That's all I can say. But you're not frustrated because you're seeing me, Southside Steve, wearing the T-shirt that I wore to bed last night because it's been a long-ass day, <laughs> along with Brett Barney, who's prepared to wear his Atlanta Braves stuff, and the on-again, off-again Tyler Maynard is here until our special guest comes on to talk Eddie Van Halen. That's what's happening on the Yet Come On Show. Good afternoon, Brett Barney, my co-host. I thought you were going to take a shot at me and be like, speaking of three seconds, Brett Barney is with me. That would have been a good no. one. I thought, no, you said our guest, I thought you said our guest was Eddie Van Halen. I was like, whoa, is this a – you resurrect no. him? <laughs> Are we interviewing no. a broom again? That worked out so well last time. No. Matter of fact, the individual that was a broom on this show because he refused to come on that day will be our special guest. We will be bringing on Will Turpin of Collective Soul – to talk about his time with Eddie Van Halen on the 95 Balance Tour, along with time uh, in the uh, early 2000s. And then we might even get into talking a little Sammy Hagar uh, and Michael Anthony, because he was with those guys as late as uh, 2017. So we're just going to do a little Van Halen talk behind the scenes. We'll bring up things that uh, nobody else is going to talk about, only guys that know him and were around him. And I'll try to bring up some of the negative stuff, just a splash, because we all got some, right, boys? Absolutely. More than uh, I probably want to admit. Yeah. I mean, there's the time where you didn't know whether you like boys or girls. Then there was the time where you chose girls. But then there was the time that you liked older women. And then you got off the, uh, the 70s kick. And then you're now who you are, Brett Barney. But you still want to live at home because your mother holds you at night when it thunders. And – you know, there's, those are some issues you've got. Very confused so, boy. So I've been living with my girlfriend and she sent me this meme the other day and I mm -hmm. don't know if I should take offense to it or not. Okay. It said hobosexual, someone who dates another person to be able to live in their home. And I'm wondering, is Boom. she a hobosexual? Am I a hobosexual? I don't pay. Yeah, you, you, uh, you like to live rent free. Let's just I do say like to live rent. Who doesn't like to live rent free? You know, so so I'm no, I'm not hating on you. You've been able to make this work for you. Um, you know, your uh, your father passes away, which I like to bring up just a little over a year ago. Your mother's at home alone. You come in as the savior, working your way into a free rent deal. Then you get this fabulous girlfriend after you broke up with your old girlfriend, and she's like, "You can stay here." So now you just bounce around from your, the two women in your life. Yeah, I mean, I basically summed it, hurt. summed it all up. That couch looks comfy. Yeah. Then you got Maynard, who we all know. Now, 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 that's my baby boy, Tyler. He's, I have set up an apartment for him in the basement, and we call it the Tyler Zone. The Tyler Zone means I don't go downstairs if he has a do not disturb button on the door. And, and I will bring dinners around and set them at his back door that we put into to the garage so he has privacy. He likes his privacy. I and, wish uh, that was my setup. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, and then there's, and then there's me, and, uh, you know, I'm playing house over here. I got a wife and two kids. And I, I have a feeling you're just relegated to that basement. I don't think they let you leave these days. Dude, <laughs> uh, you know what? The couch behind me, have a slip on it? Answer yes. <laughs> Oh, man. Passed mm. out or slept on? Uh, both. Both. <laughs> I've done both. And right now I'm drinking, and my wife is out uh, with our children and her uh, mother-in-law, and her mother-in-law is playing the role of me, and uh, they're playing on a playground and doing things, and I'm drinking in the basement doing a podcast saying all kinds of shit. That's how it should be. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. And I'm talking with my two partners that live at home with their moms. I'd say we're hot messes. That's what I say. 
Hey, you I, boy. I, don't hate on me for trying to live for free. I'm not going to hate on you anymore, and I'm going to hate on Tyler, cat boy. Tyler's got a picture of him and four cats that he owns at his house. <laughs> so, you know, both of y'all, you just do you just do y'all. Just do y'all. You're fine. Look, dog, check's clear. I got a tea time tomorrow morning. Bama's undefeated. I mean, everything in life is good. Is good. Yeah. Tyler, you want to keep that cat quiet while Brett's talking to me about his life? Uh, I thought since I didn't have my drops, I'd go activate the cat real quick. <laughs> <laughs> How did you quickly. activate the cat? I just pulled his tail real quick. <laughs> okay, well, that's – that's mean. I will tell you, I will tell you, and I don't think it's bestiality or anything weird, but we had a, we had a cat in heat and it was a girl cat, but we called her bill and it was bill the cat and bill the cat was in heat and, uh, it just kept backing up on me and my brother. So I took out a pencil as a joke. I mean, I was 14 oh stupid. God. And all I will say is bill the cat backed up on that pencil and it got weird. It got weird. <laughs> And, uh, and my mom walks in from, uh, I got a name drop a grocery store, Kroger off of old national highway. She walks in from Kroger with all the groceries and sees five kids in the neighborhood watching our cat up on her counter back onto a number two yellow pencil. All I will tell you is that was not a good night for little Steve Rickman. Was not. Ex this explains so much. Those are your formative years. Eh? Yep. She called my father and my father goes, I'll handle it, Helen. My dad waited, it, it was like four and a half hours before he got home and he beat me up like it was like it happened five minutes ago. Not literally beat me up, beat my bottom up. You know right, you're mean? disappearing into the background. <laughs> He's a ghost. I don't want to be a part of that story. <laughs> you didn't? We're torturing cats. No. That's, that's pretty oh. close. That's pretty twisted. <laughs> oh, come on. It's, it, all it is is a cat backing onto some wood and a father beating his oh, son with a belt. Yeah. What are you oh, talking yeah. about? That wasn't weird. Yeah, that's, that's a real G, right? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Yeah, Come On Show. <laughs> also, I want to say the Yeah, Come On Show is sponsored, believe it or not. Um, but, uh, you know, I'll mention the sponsors, but I just want to let you know that your kids, it's your call if you want to let them listen to this show. I, that's <laughs> not on me. Hey, speaking of sponsors and stuff that we have going on, I know that we were discussing this before the show that you possibly have just received the largest Yeah, Come On gear order in the history of Yeah, Come Oning. Yes, in the history of Yeah, Come Oning. Now, I have sold to individuals uh, more than this amount, but this amount came in off of my website, yeahcomeon.com, Y-E-A-H. C M O N just like the hat people don't get it confused and the backdrop at Brett's house. Um, but this came in and I was like, damn. And anybody that orders over $75, I give them a free yet. Yeah, come on.com t-shirt. Just a little incentive. This dude just bought. Wait, 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 can we get, wait, wait, can we guess? Oh yeah. Y'all could guess. Go ahead. All right. Go give ahead. us, give us a range like uh, $5 off. So like above or below. So Tyler and I can guess. Okay, I'll give, you, I'll give you more than that. Fair. I'll give you oh, 25, twenty-five dollars either way. Oh, that's a big one, then. I mean, for me, it is a big one. For other people, maybe not a big one. I mean, yeah, for like North big. Face, it's probably like one jacket, but mm -hmm. uh, hmm, twenty-five dollar range. I want to guess two hundred, three dollars. 38 cents 203 dollars 38 cents okay what do you think tyler i'm gonna say 300 even hmm weak ass i really don't know what this you said is. you said 300 even yeah yes okay you're wrong brett i don't know what you've won but you've won what i win what was the number I was trying to be nice. I was giving you. I was giving you more. Thank skills. you. <laughs> well, you should have tried to win, damn it, Tyler. It ain't time to be nice. Well, was, you got to win. I was doing both a little bit. <laughs> All right, it's two hundred and thirteen dollars. Oh shit! Eighty and eighty-four cents. It's ten dollars off. That's crazy. That's that is crazy. The dude bought three yet come on hats. Uh, he bought. Oh, he bought three of my yet come on tumblers. Woo! <laughs> That's nice. I'm glad to sell some tumblers. They're 25 a piece. They used to be 30. I marked them down. And he bought four Yet yeah, Come On masks for the pandemic. 
Man. Damn, the guy is up. about to hand his employees some great pre-Christmas gifts. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. I feel like I need to mention his name, but I don't know if that's right or wrong. Do not Maybe. do that. I wouldn't Can't, do that. I'm not going to do it. I'll call him Mr. Yeah, come on friendly. I'm just Mr. amazed friendly. that I almost hit that on the head. That actually is uh, an absolute off. trip, dude. I'm very impressed. And his credit card's already cleared, so uh, boopsie. You should be impressed. My credit card has already cleared. It's you? It's y'all's Christmas gifts. I'm just kidding. Yeah. No, you Why son of a bitch. <laughs> I take it. Dude, if you bought, yeah, come on for me, and I could drink from something purchased <laughs> instead of just, something I re, You could just resell it. <laughs> be good to yeah, go. instead of, thank you. Instead of, or I could resell it. You're right. Instead that's of stealing rude. it from myself, that's great. Yeah, just drink out of the tumbler once, wash it, add it back to the inventory. You're good to go. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. You know what? Maybe I should say used shit <laughs> gently used yeah yeah because that would be a tumbler used five times or less and a hat only worn twice with a slight sweat stain <laughs> from yours yours truly that would be awesome i'm not I could, gonna I could. lie the face hmm? mask is the face mask the gator that thing is dope i wear it the only way i've been I, wearing I, it everywhere i wear yeah. i have to wear it to work every day now oh you're kidding mm -mm. i'm over at another radio station company wearing yeah come on stuff <laughs> <laughs> yeah has anybody said anything to you yet or nobody noticed I, nobody said anything yet because there's not a bunch of people in the office as of now right. but there are people in the office and i'm going to be in there more next week so we'll wait and see just tell them to get their yeah come on on and go ahead feel free to negotiate i you know i'll tell rock i said hey these guys want me what do you want me to do <laughs> pay me more pay me more That'd be horrible. I love Rock 100.5. I'm loyal to a fault. I swear to goodness. I'm a that hot is, mess. That is one thing about you. You're extremely loyal. And I don't extremely. know why. I'm the same way, though. I you am, me too. Good. I wonder, do you, do you hold grudges? Uh, I try not to. I, I, it's hard for me to. And I'm Irish on my mother's side. And you would think I could hold a good grudge. I don't. My wife holds grudges just from things I said three years ago, so she can do it, but I can't. It's hard. I forgive. Yeah, well, because there's some people I forgive, like, but I don't answer, forgive. man. Yeah, you got to give it up. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I forgive, but I don't forget. Like, I would never work with Larry ever again because I, I know, but I'm not going to sit and hate on the dude. But you're nice to him in person. All right, all right. Yeah, because he, he can be a cool guy. He just doesn't know what kind of dick he turns into after a year and he doesn't know how he comes off he just doesn't know and i've worked with him too many times i'm like you just don't know what a dick you become and i don't need a dick in my life other than me <laughs> you already got three of them yeah i got me oh yeah we'll tell you my son i don't know i don't want to get in trouble with anybody yeah. all i know is kids are curious i'll say that <laughs> <laughs> yeah let's yeah. leave it at that <laughs> <laughs> no but you're saying so if somebody if i'm you, like you cannot grab that that is dead dad's i'm not grabbing yours don't you dare oh, grab geez. mine well he did was you, comparing did you see that video of the guy that was moving like a 80 inch flat screen or something and he has it up on a balcony and the one guy's going down the spiral staircase and he's holding it on the edge and his son runs up and just punches him right in the nuts, and he drops oh. it over oh. right into the driveway because they were moving it down to the basement. Mm. Yeah. I've seen that, no. You got to love your kid, oh. man. Yeah, my, my kid would do that too. He doesn't understand, and he's only racked me one time, but you can't laugh or act like it hurts because then he knows, and then he'll do it again. So right, right. I had I had to take it. I was like, "Kids, it's a fun day, Brooks." And I just talked in a different voice, and he thought I was being silly. I'm like, and I go to a man. I'm like, "You got to watch him. I need ten. I need ten. I got to go lay somewhere, somewhere." <laughs> if I can find Dying. the video, I'll have to send it to Tyler and have him insert it right here, right here, <laughs> <laughs> it is, right now. It's pretty funny. I just saw it on Instagram, but yeah. yeah. I did, I didn't know. I've heard people being like, oh, if somebody does me wrong, like they're dead to me forever, even if they apologize. I'm like, dude, if you apologize to me, like, you know, live and let live, move forward. But there's certain things that apology doesn't cut it, right? Or no? 
I guess so. Okay. I can think what of if one. Tyler and I, what, and, and this is uh, hard. Hello. Oh, what's up, man? Oh, yeah. What if got, Tyler and what if Tyler and I um, had sex with your girlfriend together? Yeah, I, I probably wouldn't time? trade you guys for that. Uh, Same time, either well, that or you watch okay. me. One or the other. I've had this discussion. Well, like, what did I walk into? I've had this discussion before. I mean, I was in a fraternity and whatnot, and as you know, there are girls that kind of run through the whole thing. That you just kind of have to understand. Like, don't be mad at the guy because she went and horse. Like, don't forgive her. See. You just brought up a good point. If I ever came in the house and somebody's having sex with my wife and I caught him, I'm not about to do anything to the dude unless my wife is crying and her hands are tied. Now I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. Well, I think, but, I think but, we, but if she's into it and saying his name or something, then I'm going to be like, all right, you know, it's not, it's, it's like, what, what do you do? It's like, you, you obviously knew what you were doing. You cheated on me. I'm not, I can't blame the guy. I'm just going to walk out a, a, on both of you. That's all. But like, okay, I think the best way it's ever been handled was remembering the original major league when Roger Dorn's wife sleeps with yes. Rick Vaughn and he has no Boom. idea. So yeah, he punches him in the face and that's that. Cause he had no idea. And then he picked him up off the ground and go, we're even bro. We're that's even. it. You got to do what you got to do. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I you got to take a hit. Yeah, but I don't think he had the right to punch him. I'll go ahead and tell you oh, that. Oh, 100% he, he had the right. No, hear me out. You're wrong. He, he had. He, hey, what's up, Will? We're talking about the scene in Major That's League. The teammates rule. Yes, yeah, the teammates rule. He All right, now it. look. If No, hold on. If he did not that's know That's different. Who if it's just was, a rando, that's different. A rando yeah. is different. Thank you. He, she, she didn't. He didn't know that that was Dorm's wife. or He didn't know. Exactly. She didn't tell him until after. So had he gone to him and told him what happened, then he doesn't get punched, right? He got punched because he didn't say anything. No, you're no. right. Now, now that I, now that it happened before he knew, I, that changed my vote. No, you okay? You can take one lick. Look, I make, don't think so. The guy, I don't, there's no need. You you make, only take a lick if you if you if no, you that knew or that's you owe him. He owes him a punch. All right, one punch. All right, I'm, I stand corrected. I will tell you, Will Turpin collective soul bassist uh and uh man about town and and my one of my musical heroes and dear friend on the yeah uh, come on show right now and i will tell you i have rubbed uh uh will's wife's shoulders and i have cuddled her once in the back of a vehicle with will driving it's happened sorry <laughs> well so you get to punch him in the face no no I I, I'm going to have a hard time, you know, letting him know what, you know, I've done with Amanda. I mean, it's, you know, <laughs> it's, a little, it's a little rougher than that. Hold on. <laughs> cut, cut. No, Will, I tell you right now, Donna could not love Will any more than she does, but there's a rumor that Will just does not like to cuddle. So she makes these jokes and she goes, can somebody just cuddle me for a second? <laughs> Will doesn't cuddle. It's hilarious. And when you meet yeah, Donna, not only – not only is she beautiful, but she is cool and funny. So it's, it's like, it's like, they're like two best friends that got married. You know, it's pretty I've awesome. Each other a long time. Yeah. Hell, I would have married you, Will. Nobody no sex, you. but I would have married you. Wait, what's considered a long time? Guy, we knew each other in grade school, baseball fields, Stockbridge, Georgia. Oh, I didn't know that. Roll Tide. Wow. Well, not Roll Tide. You grew tide. up across, when she was young, she was across the street from Dean and Ed. She lived across from them? Yeah. Uh, directly across the street. Small town story, I'm telling you. Dude. Hey, now, they didn't play Kissy Kiss in the Tree Hut or anything, did they? You, did you, do you know? No, she's got one good story where Ed picked her up and walked her home from a couple houses down where this – I can't remember the dog's name, but it was a big, shaggy, kind of playful dog. But he had, uh, he had uh, tackled Donna, and Donna was, you know, seven or eight years old, some of her earliest memories. And uh, 13 or 14 year old Ed picks her up and takes her home. <laughs> that is sweet. Look at that. Ed carried your wife home underage. Damn. <laughs> he was underage too, though. So. <laughs> again, roll tide. That is, a, again, quit with the roll tide shit. Oh, my God. Uh, Will, I just want to thank you for being on the Yet Come On show. And of course, we are uh, talking about. Ed Van Halen, Edward, um, what a loss. Uh, you have, 
I know you were on the uh, our morning show on Bailey and Southside this morning, and I really appreciate you coming on. But are people reaching out to you and now more than ever wanting to talk to you? I mean, because you you knew these guys. I mean, it's not like you, you know, uh, like maybe I met him or got an autograph or went backstage for a second. You were on the road with Van Halen, and you've got some fantastic Eddie stories, and he did some nice things for you. So you know, I'll ask you again, how you holding up? I mean. You know, it's just – it is like you you think about the memories. It's not like we were hanging out with Eddie all the time after the tour. But, you know, 20 – that was 95, that tour. So, 25 years later, yeah, you just think about the memories and, and how much it meant to me and uh, how much his music means to me and to everyone else in the world and, and what he was as far as uh, a musician and entertainer and innovator. Uh, he was a he was a he was a big deal, man. This there's uh, not a lot of people's burn brain that as his does, man. I mean, you're right. That's truly gifted. Uh, what he can do, and you know, you look at all these guitarists, and I know all you guys. In order to play instruments, some of you read music, some of you don't. Um, but but you spend a lot of time with that instrument in your hand, and there has to be a point where you've all driven crazy learning um maybe eddie learned quicker than most at control but you know when you're a musician which you know you are and you played the same yourself uh i take it you took piano lessons first kind of like he did and then it spun into other instruments it seems like a lot of you guys get your start with your parents getting you piano lessons but you know your father or played being, or just being around you yeah yeah um Eddie was a ex- uh, creature of extreme habit. So he, he told me that he, once he picked up a guitar, it never, it, he just sat there on the end of his bed and he played guitar all the time. Uh, nothing really, I mean, there's, you know, there's an aptitude for being able to do something, but nothing comes easy. I mean, the guy, and still in 95, every, I mean, unless the show was over and he was changing and, getting ready to eat some food. Uh, it was always dinner after the show. Um, he always had a guitar on. I mean, he would be talking to you, moving his left hand. Some, most of the time, an, a non-alcoholic beer in his right hand on that whole tour. Um, wow. That's he was crazy. Called, it's like he, he felt weird probably not having a guitar on. Always had a guitar on. If he's just walking around, he's got a guitar on. That's nuts, man. I wonder what kind of toll that takes on people in your personal life. I touched on this this morning, and I want to touch on it uh, on our morning show, but I want to talk to you, too, on this. And I'm not trying to put any dirt, but is it tough being with married to a guy like that? Like, you know, you, you look at what's being said online, and Valerie Bertinelli, you know, Valerie Van Halen puts out, hey, I'll see you. You know, we'll be back together. It was very thoughtful. It was like they were still married. And then I look at his now uh, wife. He's a, it, yeah. Look, he's an extremely lovable guy. He's he's so so sweet, and he has he makes such an impact on everybody. I mean, yeah, there's you know he kind of seems like there's hard lines he draws with some you know, trials and tribulations through the years, but. Make no doubt about it, man. Sammy Hagar loves him like a brother. Um, wow, we're, but you know what? You find you was, but you find out that that it's not Axel or not Axel. Thinking of my boss, I love you, Axel. No, it's not. It's not his brother. That's the that's the uh, the the jerk. It's you know, it's it's not Alex. It's it's more Eddie can be the toughest to deal with. You Eddie, know, Eddie's but, probably the toughest, but you know, definitely never was a jerk. I mean, never. Never. I mean, he just, it's just a hard line he draws and it's, you know, I mean, look, man, the name of the band's Van Halen for a reason. Uh, yeah. You know. Yeah, it is. That does, but you know, you find out later that it started off as two different names. You're like, my God, y'all were mammoth at one point in time. <laughs> it's like, damn, Van Halen sounds a lot better. And you know, you don't know the hard lines, but it's, uh, you know, a lot of these guys, it's like you find out and even Bon Jovi, you know, the bass player, I met that guy. He rode around with us in a car one night after a concert in the eighties. And, uh, you know, he's a bit of a jerk, 
but then he gets kicked out of the band and you find out it's because he just wasn't playing the bass properly. He wasn't hitting all the notes and it irked Bon Jovi. Yeah, said, you got to go. He was just drop. That, that's the word we got. We, we've done a few shows with Bon Jovi, but yeah, that's what kind of filtered through on the, the backstage ranks is, yeah, he just was missing stuff, man. He just wasn't carrying his weight. So, so, and then you got a guy like you, you know, and I imagine all you guys, you got to carry your weight. So when you're playing, does it, do, is there ever a bad night where you guys can hide it for each other? Or do you guys just bring it every damn night? And that's what you have to do to stay in good graces with each other. Uh, you know, there, everybody's got ups and downs and perfection is something that's, you know, always something you reach for, but it's never, never obtained. Uh, but we carry each other. If somebody's having a bad night, we try to carry the other ones like, oh, Jesse's having problems over there, technical issues. All right, me and Johnny are going to lift this whole thing up right now. We're going to we're going to take care of Jesse a little bit here, but um, yeah, man, it's just uh, you never. It's not like you're 100 percent every night. Everything's different from night to night. Speaking of like carrying your weight, I mean that band that we toured with, uh, 1995, uh, Van Halen was on top of the world, man. What was it they opened up with the um, opening track from Balance, Seventh Seal. Every night, man, Eddie'd start the show with, you know, like a lot of the records do, a lot of the records start with an Eddie Van Halen solo. Uh, mm -hmm. heck, Most songs. Yeah, a lot of the songs. 1984 started with a, a keyboard solo, you know. Um, but, um, man, he'd start, he'd start, man, that arena, his sound he could make. What a, what a golden experience for us, man. And they, again, they treated us like uh, little brothers and, Really wanted to, we were very, uh, we, we felt comfortable. So we started asking a lot of questions because we were new and young. So why not? Right. We're going to, of course, we're going to ask a lot of questions. That's yeah. what we were always talking about. So, I mean, Eddie was the first person that made us go or set up meetings for us as the band to go meet lawyers and, and you know, a few other business folks when we were questioning our first manager eddie was the one that steered us so this isn't right man you got you guys got to meet with somebody else and tell them your story here and of course wow. you know everybody knows about the, the first manager in the lawsuit yeah he was the one that took care of us there he was the one that took care of us on that on, on that first step out the door because believe it or not when you trust somebody it's hard to go okay now we're, we're gonna go out on our own right now and eddie's like no you guys need to uh, go have a meeting with somebody else right now you know Wow. That is strong, you know, because we always hear that. I think anybody, regardless of how into music you are, you look at artists and, and I think we all know that it's really touchy with you guys on like your first two or three albums and how much money you get and, and how much the business is brutal to musicians. And, you know, and then all of a sudden you get to make your own calls. So I think we've all heard that. That's cool that he gave you that kind of advice because, you know, you guys were already, you're like in your first year, second year getting it, you know, at that point in time when you were on tour with them. How, who yeah. set that up for you guys to go on tour with it, with Van Halen? Oh, man, what a great story. That's a good question. We were in the studio, Criteria Studios, finishing up the uh, self-titled second record. And back when people used, you know, uh, landlines and there was like a receptionist answering phones and buzzing into the control room a or whatever some um she actually buzzed in because uh sammy wanted to talk to uh ed um yeah you buzz in for that yeah you interrupt people on that shit good call Hold on. good call by the receptionist yes uh and i think that receptionist i'm not i'm not sure i think i i think I, anyway um what but, you uh, date her i think no I think our uh, Shakira was recording there at the same time, which is which oh. which was I missed I missed don't, missed out on that, but we did get to meet her, uh, and it was before nice. she had broken the states. We didn't really know who this girl was. Another another story, but yeah, um, but yeah, the their initial word from our agent was that we were finishing up recording and we couldn't get on the road, and I guess Sammy couldn't take that as an answer, so Sammy got on the phone with Ed, and sure enough, we were wrapping up the uh, second record in less than uh, you know much quicker than normal time. We finished up in like two days. Ed stuck around Miami for another couple of days and tidied up all vocals and anything else. And uh, next thing you know, we met in Florida and we had all our gear ready. And uh, we were at a, we were at an arena in Pensacola and we were about to take off on a, man, it was, it was about 30, 35 shows across every arena in America and Canada, man. 
Dude, that was such a break even for you guys exposing, you know, the world to collective soul, you know, and you guys, I mean, you know, for people that don't know, you know, I, I, I always like tooting your horn. I mean, like eight number one hits. I'm sorry. That's huge. And soundtracks and, and the fact that, you know, I love the fact you're local boys and you guys, zero egos, just talented son of bitches that just want to, you know, have a drink and hit a golf ball. You know, uh, that's the way I see it with hey, Collective you. Salt. Yeah, it's just good stuff, man. And the fact that, you know, you stayed on the south side for a while, you know, I think that's fantastic, you know, and you've, you've moved, you upgraded. I know you did. You went, for, you, you went from McDonough, uh, you know, where you were right near my bar down there, and then you went to Peachtree City. So now you're on the north side of the south side, which is awesome. But I see your, uh, your backdrop. Um, what's the story on the blue guitar behind you? Oh, that's, uh, that's Jude's. That was actually uh... – a buddy of mine's it's just a little uh junior they call it les paul junior i can't remember what the model's called but that's jude's guitar uh there's a les paul custom right there with right next to it but uh yeah look at that that's the nicer and, one this is the jam room up here man this is what oh, we call look at the that. jam yeah. room check it out better lighting the more the more podcasts i start doing i i figure out that i need a room with controlled lighting because i got a glare on my a Van Halen frame. This is this is what we all got at the end of that tour. Everybody on the crew and Look stuff. Look at that. It's the Japanese, the Japanese like a uh, folded out graphic design sheet of what the CD would have been, and they all signed it. Dude, and, that's fantastic. So you only uh, you toured the, the forty eight states, right? Uh, in in uh, around we, you we, guys. I think we played a show in Toronto and maybe a show in okay. Vancouver with them. Yeah. That's, that's my, cool my, and. That's the 48. Yeah, that's the that's the 50, yeah. whatever. The yeah. 50. But I just didn't know. It's like you didn't get to go abroad with the guys. And I know there were other bands on the tour. I know Brother Kane, and I got around those guys because I dated their uh, record rep. Uh, I think it was Virgin here for a while. Her, her name was Andy. She ended up marrying the bass player for Peter Gabriel. and uh, But I dated Tony her Levin? before. Huh? Tony Levin? Yeah. Tony Levin's her husband, yep. And she was 10 years my senior, and I dated her for about uh, three or four months. And let me tell you, that girl rocked my world. She taught me things that uh, – coming back, coming back from seeing Brother Kane in Alabama. You're, you're, in, the, you're in the same huh? company as Tony Levin, buddy. I, I, that's a feather in your cap, man. I'll take it. I'll take it. So we're riding back, and she goes, do you want me – you know, a little third base in the car. Problem is, she's driving. So she puts it on cruise control. I steer – and she does the dirty while we're coming back from Alabama seeing Brother Kane. And I'm like, Ooh. well, that's a, that's a first. Probably Roll shouldn't tie. say. Roll tie. I, wish, I wish Brother Kane would have had a more long, longer uh, run. We, we love those guys, and that would have been a great band to tour more with. Super cool guys, lead singer. He had a way about him. You know, I thought he, I thought he had uh, a lot of charisma on stage and, you know, he knew how to work a roll. fan. Great, great rock and roll, man, just pure – the right stuff, man. It was a, uh, it was as it was as good as like the Black Crows. Maybe a little more, a uh, little more, little let a tiny bit less Southern and a little more straight ahead American rock. Yeah, I I totally agree with that. Yeah, so that was just so cool that you guys were were getting to do the Van Halen thing, but it it totally worked That's for a good for, you. Back for you. There it is. There's a Van Halen Collective Soul ticket. Look at that. May 2nd, yeah, 1995, man. baby. Mm. Yeah. Will Turpin was there. You were there, baby. Yeah, man. I, I've got a tour book I saved. I got it. I, uh, yeah, I got a lot of stuff I saved. So I, I should have pulled the tour book out. But. Is that a hat? Is that a Van Halen lid we're no, busting that, out right I, there? I was wondering if you were going to say something. It's AC. I was. Long. <laughs> ah, soccer you know what? it is it's a soccer <laughs> lid but from here it looks I like frankenstein to, it does it looks like I went, yeah i went and tried to try to pretend it's just my ac milan hat with black and red i read well, a i gotta tell you it, so it <laughs> i was gonna ask if you didn't well brett go ahead what do you what do you got for will because again uh those oh, uh you know, these these are just fantastic stories. You know, we're just days removed from the announcement, you know, finding out that Eddie Van Halen yeah. is, is gone. And none of us, I don't think, you didn't know, Will. None of us knew you. Uh, he was even, even sick. Even recently, I remember, I remember saying a lot last summer because we you know, we still just love doing the same things we always did when we were young. We, we 
after a show, we're up and we're buzzed and we're talking on the bus and we're listening to music. And we, we usually take a, a band uh, or an artist and go, you know, kind of stick on it that night and talk about their career and talk about their lives. And it was one of the Van Halen nights. And I was like, guys, they, they listen to me. They will tour again. This will happen. We're going to see Michael Anthony and Sammy on stage with them again. Oh, that would have been awesome. Awesome. I I don't know what Wolfgang would have done, but you know, just to get Wolfgang would have been happy as hell, man. Trust yeah. me. Okay, he would. So you've you've obviously met Wolfgang and everything because no, it's I like met you know, Wolfgang, but I mean Wolfgang's a millionaire. I mean he's fine. He's not gonna. I mean it's it's not a you know it's not a that that's at a certain point it transcends uh, who's doing what. You know they that 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 reunion would have been insane. It would have been, and that's something that would have been a must-have ticket just to see them all, those four back, because for me, that was my Van Halen. I'm more of a Van Hagar guy, so I would have thoroughly enjoyed that. And, you know, you just want to believe that that would have happened, you know, in 2021, 2022. Now, a question I'll ask you, you know, we know what happens to bands when they lose their lead singers. That's a tough spot, but the band's still there. So you can play. You just got to find somebody that either looks like or sounds like the guy or willing to step in to, to tweak it a little bit where it's not perfect. Just like, you know, you look at Axl Rose jumped in for ACDC. He's no Brian Johnson. So it sounded different, but it worked. What do you do when you lose Eddie Van Halen and Van oh, there's Halen? No band, man. There's no band. Is it is it done? Alex, it is done. Alex can do whatever he wants to do, but he's not going to try to tour as Van Halen. Are you kidding me? I mean, I, I, you know, I guess stranger things have happened, but no, there's no band, man. Is there any guitarist that that Eddie would tilt the uh, the, the 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 pick to the metal I mean, well, pick? I mean, it's just it's not even. It's not even feasible in my mind, really. It's just not even feasible. So Michael Anthony, I mean, Sammy thing, Hagar. You got, yeah. What you got is you got you got Sammy in the circle. You got Sammy Hagar still kicking ass. I think he just turned seventy three. Yeah. Uh he's 72 up there. or seventy three. He was older than the other guys. Eddie was sixty five. Ed uh Michael's younger. So he's the he was he was Mikey. He's the youngest. He's uh he's probably sixty three. Um but no, there's no – nobody – Alex Van Halen ain't going to get behind drum set and try to go on tour as Van Halen. Hey, <laughs> it had to be asked, though. Is there yeah, a guitar a live – I don't home? know if it had to be asked, Steve, actually. I'm not even sure it had to be asked. No, it did. <laughs> no, it did. <laughs> it definitely – dude, I even wrote down – one of my questions was, could Eddie be replaced like Freddie Mercury was replaced by Adam Lambert? No, I mean – I mean, I didn't think – Anybody can yeah, ever but you still Freddie. got you still got the entire band other than Freddie Mercury or the entire band other than ACDC. Uh, Van Halen was Sammy Hagar plays great guitar and he played guitar uh, sporadically to say that to say the least uh, on when he was in Van Halen. But that's a four piece band. It's a three piece rock trio. The dude playing guitar was the best in the world there's nobody that can go on tour and play guitar and say they're van halen it's just it's no okay now hold on you've been cutting me off so let me let me get my thing out so it's if you have alex i oh, know if you <laughs> keep your thing in keep your thing in <laughs> it's out it's out it's out i will pull down my pants and do this the rest <laughs> of this shit come on show bottomless but everybody go bottomless now oh, um, Donald no. Duck. yeah Wait, i don't no, have underwear I, on do okay all right well i don't, I don't. Uh, i'm wearing running shorts lulu you just need a liner in your rock but no i'm i'm just saying to you will if you had alex on the drums you had michael anthony on bass you've got sam or are singing is there any guitarist that would come out and and be able to play anything like eddie and and fans not get upset realizing that they're just trying to do something special in his memory Okay, well, yeah, you presented a possible scenario. Okay, I'll give you that. All right. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. In other words, you have you have Frankenstein sitting there on a stand. You know, you, it's Eddie. You know, uh, his wife comes out and thanks to everybody. Somebody plays. Who could play? What's the best oh, okay. guitar? Yeah, you mean like especially as a tribute? Of course, man. Of course. Yes, yes, yes. Of course. Uh, Not going on tour, but give us a night. Give us that 5150, OU812 balance. No, give it to it's, us. It's the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame tribute. 
because they're going to probably bring somebody out and do something. Right. Correct. Right. 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 Yeah. That's, who? yeah. That would be that would be something they need to do. Uh, I don't know. Slash. I don't know. I mean, you know, Eric Clapton. No. <laughs> no, not the style. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, that's tough. Nuno Betancourt could probably do a good job. Uh, Vic what John about Ingbe Monstein? If if uh, Dimebag was still alive, he'd be the one. <laughs> That'd be fun. You know, it's it's. You know, you know Eddie, but his, the people you're mentioning have their own style, and Joe Bonamassa Halen has a style that. Yeah, true. Nobody. Dimebag was so influenced by him, though. That's why I would say it. Only. No, that would be special. When it'd be cool to hear Dimebag do eddie van halen that would be you know eddie put that guitar in his coffin when he got buried like from the cover of uh 1984 i think yeah wow yeah it's crazy yeah it it is the whole the whole fact of the matter is crazy it's just a damn shame but then there's a guy like you i never met him uh will you know um i had two opportunities things came up you just always thought you'd have your shot um and uh, i never got backstage i had two deals with uh, 96 Rock. I'm looking at like Christopher Rood's pictures and he was backstage with him a couple times. I'd never met him. I don't know how tall he was. I'd never heard him laugh. You know, I just know that he was a friendly guy, put his arms around people and yeah. felt the love. And, and, you know, you can speak to that uh, and then tell us about the gift he gave you. Yeah. I mean, he, like I said, he was, um, you know, he was, if he was up, he wanted to be doing something. So, I don't think it's that we were the coolest guys in the world or anything, but he, as soon as we got to the dressing room, almost every show day, Eddie pops in with his guitar and wants to hang out and talk. Um, I mean, I literally remember every now and then being like, man, shit, I got to do shit to do to get ready for the show tonight. And the sound check, here comes Eddie. God dang, I guess I got to talk to Eddie again. You know, <laughs> that's awesome. I mean, not, <laughs> Not in a negative way, but that's how real it was. He was always popping in Shit. and talk and hang out, you know? Eddie, man, you're, I ain't got time. I'm trying to make it. Right, what are you doing? Forget about whatever I had on my mind I was going to do. All right, what, let's talk, you know? But, um, yeah, man, so he would – yeah, one time he's just he, – he slid it in there. Even though it was Eddie Van Halen, he slid it in there because we were always having casual conversation. He's like, uh, what, do you, what are your next – you know, your next bass? I know you're looking – everybody's always looking for the next instrument or whatever, but – what do you want your next bass to, to be? And I was like, I, I want to I'm gonna do all black, everything black. I like, I like black. Um, and I want a five string. I don't have a five string. And I did, I did. Now thinking back, it's like, why didn't I think, Oh, he was going to get me a bass an all black bass. So, but he called uh music man, Ernie ball and um, got me, mm. got a custom all black five string stingray bass. About two Damn. weeks later, it's in the dressing room. I don't know. I, I get to the arena and I think I was going to go to catering because the uh, guitar tech, uh, Eddie's guitar tech flagged me down. He's like, Hey man, there's something in the dressing room for you. So um, I went to the dressing room. There's a case. I was like, well, okay. I opened it up. There's an all black, you know, five string stingray. And I turn around I'm like, man, this is for, and there's Eddie. Eddie sn- sneaks in to watch me open it. I mean, wow. That's the kind of guy, he was, you know, that's cool as hell. Did he do anything for anybody else in the band or did he just dig? Oh, everybody, one little everybody's got a, a guitar that Eddie gave him and uh, the VH 5150 cabinets that PV was making. Yeah. Well, I know the cabinet. We were joking this morning. A lot of people, you know, <laughs> if, if you're fans of uh, Collective Soul, you know, Ed Rowland uh, is, is pretty grounded. Will Turpin, the most grounded, married with fantastic athletic kids. And then there's Dean who just, is like the the no the rock and roll nomad. He's just West Coast. He's Middle Coast. He's Coast Coast. He he, he doesn't have a house. He's grounded he's either now. In the, the last couple of years, he's yeah. been grounded. He's got a daughter, yeah, but, and a family in San Diego. Yep. Yeah, so now, he, which San Diego, wonderful place to live. My God. So it's so funny that you're like looking in your house, going, "Yeah, this is Dean's. I've been holding it for him all these years. Now the dude's got a house. It's time to go pick it up, or either Will <laughs> Turpin keeps it. One or the other. He's got one of those cool, like posh townhome apartments he i don't even think he could get a four by four by ten cabinet up there four by twelve whatever it is the but it's the 5150 cabinet and it was in our it was just getting buried and all our all the collective soul junk that just kind of builds after each tour and uh i took it out he knows i got it i took it out and uh I've got his 5150 cabinet from that tour hey man if you want me to keep it here for you man when dean comes in town i'll hold it for you baby 
as long as you got it, I mean, I, I don't need it. I don't use it. <laughs> God knows. That's just kick-ass. Van Halen's case. Well, I'll tell you right I'll now, we're going to take, take it to the studio. Really? Yeah, I want to hear more about what's going on with you. We're going to do a cigarette break uh, because you're one talented dude and you're a long way. You better be a long way from a uh, casket yourself, sir. And I want to know what the world holds for Will Turpin and uh, Collective Soul, too. And, uh, and we'll talk a little more about Eddie. I'm sure that Brett has a couple questions. But we're going to take a quick commercial break on the Yet Come On Show brought to you by Oxygen financial.com circle 285.com get your free quotes if you've been with the same insurance company for homeowners or driving your car and ridgeline counseling with dr david markwell back with will turpin in the yeah come on show yeah come on i'm david markwell with ridgeline counseling the current situation we're in is bringing all kinds of issues into our lives everything from stress and anxiety to frustration bouts of depression and loneliness well, we're here to help at Ridgeline Counseling. You can reach us at 770-993-9700, or you can email us at RidgelineCounseling at gmail.com. Currently, we're offering telemental services through video and phone platforms, and in a few weeks, we'll be transitioning back to in-person office visits. In the meantime, stay safe. We'll get through this. Yeah, come on. Back with the Yeah, Come On show and Will Turpin of Collective Soul and uh, talking about his experiences on the road in 1995 with Van Halen on the Balance Tour, uh, as well as just staying in contact with these guys throughout the years, um, even up to 2017. I know, Will, you guys were working with Sammy Hagar and Michael Anthony, and obviously you were still in touch with Eddie till the early 2000s. So um, we've got some pictures to kind of take you back and uh, we're enjoying the conversations, and thanks again for coming on. Yeah, man. So what have we got? One, Tyler Maynard, our uh, associate producer of the Yet Come On Show, as Brett Barney sits there staring at me awkwardly. <laughs> I found a nice curly-haired uh, Turpin there, it looks like. On the ah, way. there's my Turpin. <laughs> yeah, that was the main publicity shot we signed over and over. Nice. Yep. And I like it. The shot with the bass there. That's the bass. Tell us about that. That's the bass that Eddie got you, right? Yeah, it's at the studio. I mean, I still use it today. So, um, a nice bass. I mean, literally, yeah. man. You know, it's it's a it's a physical thing, but it's one of my most prized possessions for sure. Did he sign it, or is that just too weird? You know, I wish I would have had him like sign it in a spot. You know. Uh, and taking a picture with him. But, you know, man, we just – we didn't have these phones and didn't have – we just – you know, my wife would come out on tour. Donna would come out on tour. Um, and she would bring a camera. But, you know, we just – we were just living it, man, living in the moment. We didn't, we didn't have our own cameras. There's lots of pics between the, the tour guys and the professional photographers that were there at the shows. Um, it is see. weird how we just didn't do that. People now don't understand. We I mean, don't always, we didn't always take picture everywhere we went. We no, see, you know, I mean, I, I no. like that thing that that happens now because you can always you can look back at your timeline and stuff and and see like physically see it. You know, you don't have to just try to remember it. But um, there is an awkward picture of you and I. We're both shirtless in front of the '96 Rock Inflatable at Music <laughs> Midtown in '95, and we're holding each other. But you know, I don't. I keep that for myself. It's laminated. I forgot how many times I would play shirtless, and it wasn't that many times. Trust me, I'm, I'm skin and bones. But uh, I've, I've looked at, back at a few pictures, and there's me with no shirt on. I'm like, what the heck am I doing? Well, you first off, you, you no, you know what it was? Hey, that's a beautiful arm. Don't make me hug it. You had already locked down a beautiful wife, a soulmate, and you're like, I don't give a damn what anybody thinks. I'm a rock star, and I got my girl, and you're just doing it, baby. You didn't care. You didn't care. That's it. And how old is your oldest child now? Tristan is 22. <gasps> oh, my He's God. He's made Steve feel old. Oh, it's not that hard. It's All right, that was old. mean. That was mean as I shit. Mean, look at that goatee, Bubba. <laughs> I know, but still. Hey, Will Turpin is wrong. Right? By the youngest man in Collective Soul. I don't he, see any gray. I don't see any is. gray in this. Will. Oh, you're 59 now, I'm guessing? 50? 
Rock and roll years, you never know, man. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> damn it. Well, I, I, Road hard, put up wet. I'll just tell you, when, when, you know, Will's such a huge soccer fan, and I love it, and I love his love for soccer, and I mistook his hat for a damn Van Halen lid. Uh, but, uh, you know, your son, I just, I, I never forget the story of when you, he, you were happy because he was playing soccer and he was a little dude. And we're at Atlanta Silverbacks back when they played at DeKalb Memorial Stadium off Memorial Drive. And he goes, lets him run onto the field. I'm like, yeah, he can run on the field. This kid takes off and his little legs are just like, Brrr. and, and now he's 22 years old. I can't believe yeah. it. I cannot believe yeah. it. He's like a little speedy Gonzalez. Oh, oh yeah. Dude, it's it six, five, five, six is an athletic, you know, like you're, you're out of, any out of shape adult, he, he had him. You could not yeah. catch six. I'd have to, what? you would play this game where you'd look at, look up at me real slow and barely start to walk away right around four or five years old. And as soon as he thought he was like 12 foot away, way he fast as he could i'd have to take off after him it was a game he played and, and he was fast you're like and so i can't dude, catch you and, and i can't catch dude's you. more like me my, my middle son's more like me it's long but uh, <laughs> tristan tristan and uh luke are just their 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 balance and their speed is exceptional which makes them um, do you miss uh, – we're on the soccer kick for a second, but do you miss your your old house? Because you had a really nice pitch back there, yeah. you know. You had a lot, you had a lot of land, um, you know, but that was great for raising the kids. Is that one reason you decided to move? You're like, I've raised my kids. I don't need a soccer field in my backyard anymore. Yeah, I definitely want to transition from that kind of a little bit of um, – a little bit of downsizing going on, but uh, it's downsizing, but upscale. That's what we, that's what I tell everybody. So we got nice. a nice pool. It's all, it's all hardscape in the back and really, really a uh, lot of cool outdoor space out there. It's nice. Well, I'm There's happy no for you. You come a long way, baby. You come a long way, you know, with collective yeah, soul. Man, and that's, that's what and, this and, is all about. This whole Eddie Van Halen thing is just, you know, you keep thinking back, man, that was, we were young and it was 95 and, it's even hard to imagine that they were older or younger than I am mm -hmm. now when I was on tour with them. That's kind of, Oh, that is weird. I didn't think about that too. Brett, do you have a couple questions for, uh, for him about uh, any Van Halen stuff for Will? Oh yeah. Because I don't hitting questions. I was actually kind of curious. Where were you when you found out who told you everything like along the lines of that, when it comes to, I was in the studio and I started getting texts and I, and I was ignoring them because uh, I was actually recording a bass track and then uh, I looked at my phone I missed about seven eight texts yeah so it was, uh, it was in the studio man and sure enough man the Eddie's bass he gave me was within within ten foot of me so I mean of course I mm. looked right at it and took a picture and posted it on Instagram. Who sent you the first text that you uh, read, my buddy? And like my when, buddy Chad Woody. when it hit, when it hit you, like my buddy Chad Woody, Steve knows Chad. Chad's yeah. uh, been, Chad said he's been to no less than 15, 16 Van Halen shows. He he wow. knows rock and roll, man. That's why we're that's why we're close buddies. But wow, uh, Chad had Chad had Chad had sent the first text. Mm. When you guys, you know, a lot of times you go and see a concert, and the headliner might bring on on the opening act kind of band to play a song or they may come out and play a song with you. Was there any time where you guys ever played a song together on stage? No, there wasn't. Um, no, we never played. I mean, everybody had their show. <laughs> I was in Eddie Van Hay or I was in Michael Anthony's tent watching him every night at Anthony's cafe. Uh, and, and, and Michael would always try to get me to put on the bass and go out there and play Eagles Fly, which was Sammy's song, uh, because it was kind of just a G to C basic kind of rock song. He's like, you'll kill it. Every night he'd try to get me to do that. And I was That's like, awesome. you told him I might do that? He's like, no, nah, man, I hadn't told him. I was like, I ain't doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Um when it comes to 80s rock bands, I, I lived in the 80s for seven and a half months. So obviously I'm an 80s baby and know everything <laughs> about it. But I'm curious, where does Van Halen kind of rank in the 80s 
bands because 80s rock bands that is because the 80s seemed to be this real iconic era for rock and roll yeah i mean you know rankings are just kind of like one of those things that are fun to talk about and we we just guess again that's another like common thing we like to kind of do on the bus when we're all having fun after the show but um i mean you know it's all you you can ask me a year from now i might say something different but um yeah, I mean Van Halen, golly, let's let's say they're they are the most iconic. I mean the the range of songs, uh, the way the way Eddie was able to be uh, the most innovative yet hooky, brilliant tunes uh, started on his guitar, transitioned to uh, some of the most coolest, most innovative keyboard tunes. Um, and how many bands can really change lead singers like, like that and um, still just create records that are insane, man? Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say, man. Eddie Van Halen, just, you know, one of, one of a kind to say the least. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, who else? Who else is more rock and roll than, than Van Halen? And to be really, honest, there's not many in it. Steve may need to answer that question. He's a little more versed than I am on the subject. Uh, I don't think, I don't think uh, uh, Will's going to dig my answer, but my order for me was Journey first, Bon Jovi second, uh, ACDC third, Van Halen fourth. Those were my is, top four. Is U2 not in there? Was U2? Uh, no, in excess, in excess was my number five. See, I've got it. Yeah, that, that's one cool thing that makes the 80s so cool is you got bands like NXS, REM, yeah. U2 that really were considered alternative. But this is just yes. this is just really rock and roll. It's just another it's American rock and roll, it's pop rock and rolls, whatever you want to call it. It's it's rock and roll. Um so yeah, so all those bands, yeah. So we start talking about ranking them. I mean, you know. Well, okay, how about this? How about this? If you eliminate the band and we're just discussing musician as a musician personally. Oh, Van Halen would just go and tear over every other band in the 80s and leave nothing behind, man. They would just shred them on every instrument, every, every song. Yeah, I, I, hell I, I will agree with that. They would Eddie shred Halen, everybody. Yeah, yeah, when, when you, you got, got when, when you have, have a combination like Eddie Van Halen and a bass player Michael like Anthony, Mike Anthony. Yeah. Alex Van Halen. It's Alex on the drums. Insane the power they come with, man. Yeah. You weren't going to touch that I'll give you. That I will tell you that you're right. I might like the sound of Journey a little bit more based on the tunes, but <laughs> when it comes down to musicianship and being a badass, yeah, they were going to take it. Now, what a okay. Now, what's the best Van Halen song? Mm. Wow, if you're, gonna, if you're gonna plug up live, go there. Is anyone else having an issue? Damn, I lost y'all. Y'all froze up. No, no you're here now. Y'all froze up. We on can my hear screen. you. I'll go like this. Go ahead and three, two, one. Best Van Halen song again. Yeah, what's the best Van Halen song? Because I've always heard Jump. I think Jump was my introduction to Van Halen. Nah. Well, there's like I like Panama. Oh, yeah. Panama's class. Panama's iconic. There's the most popular. I mean, this is another, this is another mute point. It's just fun to talk. I had to pick one, the one that gets my blood flowing the most. It's uh, Mean Street, uh, the opening of Fair Warning. There you go. That's great. Totally, totally agree. That, that's badass. Uh, I was listening to some of the intros. We actually played a game where we were playing Eddie Van Halen licks and you had to pick the song. And I'm like, good God, this dude has got so many hooks. Did he play it the same way every time, Will? Ah, having issues. And we're gonna, he's definitely having router issues. Yeah, uh, yeah he did. Uh, yeah. Actually, I think I, uh, Zoom just came on it. and said my internet connection is unstable. <laughs> <laughs> no, no to work something out with your genius. 
It, it is it is uh, unstable, so we'll have to get to your electrician. Uh, we'll go ahead and, and call it a show because this is live. This is what we do. And well, uh, now, How is it working so well now? He's moving fine. I don't know. I don't know. Like, look at that. But, look, now it works fine. <laughs> <laughs> because, but, I, okay, can I ask? I have to ask this. Motley Crue has the movie The Dirt on Netflix. Do you think there will be a Van Halen movie now? Oh, there should be for sure, man. I mean, golly, come on. I mean, I would – everybody's lining up to watch that. Yeah, biopics are the big deal. I'm ready. I think the Collective Soul movies within 10 years. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I get – who's going to play me? I want to know who's going to be in a studio at a small <laughs> college station and play Shine. I want to know who's going to do that. But, you know. We'll I see. think a much more interesting question would be who's going to play me. But, yeah, who's going to play the guy who – okay. We'll yeah, find we'll, somebody. Yeah. We'll, find, we'll go. We're gonna go on the streets and find somebody with a big ponytail. <laughs> hey, it was already shoulder length then, so we got to find somebody to play me to play him for the first time. But of course, we got to find somebody to play you. That's horrible. You might actually look the youngest of all. You might be able to play you. You might be able to play you. Nah, could maybe. You got to go a list artist. You gotta yeah, a list actor. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. We'll Machine see. Gun, Machine Gun Kelly plays Southside Steve. <laughs> maybe <laughs> no i gotta tell you uh collective soul is in my is always in my top five i i'm a huge ass fan and dude i i love it when you guys come on the radio and uh it's just fantastic i'm i'm so proud of the body of work you did you're you're my eddie van halen i like i like being in the room with you will turpin oh thanks steve thanks buddy love you man Love you too. And uh, give your thanks to our wife too. Real quick, since you are working, um, we just want to know what's going on with Collective Soul and real quick, what's going on with Will Turpin? How can people find your music? What are you up to? Yeah, uh, Collective Soul is just talking about maybe trying to get some kind of production going on. Uh, some type of, you know, we recorded in the summer, but maybe something else that we can do live. Uh, not necessarily stream it live, but something we can record live. Just do something special because we, we don't do well when we're not playing music. So we're trying to come up with ways to do more stuff right now. But uh, the tour is being talked about for next year. Uh, so big plans for next year already. Uh, so cross your fingers that that will be allowed to happen. Uh, and uh, I've been spending a lot, you know, look for the blessings in the, in the COVID era or the year 2020. But I've been spending a lot of time at uh, my studio, Real to Real Studios. You know, my father started in 1976, and uh, I started uh, kind of just refurbing the place and going through everything last year. And then this summer, I've been there a lot. So um, yeah. yeah, man, I've been doing anything from just hooking the place up and and moving all of my entire studio into Studio B. So I've got a whole, I've got two studios in one studio. I got a little photo studio in there. So Real to Real Studios, if uh, anybody wants to. Uh, record some stuff there's all kind of things you can get done there real to real and that's in uh what where's that located it's in jonesboro georgia right off the 75 gotcha right below the airport all right boomsy man that's great that you've been making that drive up uh to that and again something your father started now you're running it and it's fantastic so again all you musicians where would you like to uh to play i'd go where will turpin is i'd go touch that bass do you allow people to touch the bass just touch it <laughs> It's uh, I took it on the road for a long time, so it's it's well worn in to say the least. It's it's been beat up, man. I played it. Instruments are meant to be played, so people saw it on the road all through the through the nineties. That's awesome, man. That's such a cool piece, Brett. You got one more question for Will Turpin of Collective Soul. The last thing I was going to add: What's the most iconic movie that Van Halen's been a part of or had a song in? I don't even know if I can list off enough that you guys would even be able to answer this well before will freezes but if you look at some of them varsity blues detroit rock city howard stern private parts twister space balls airheads super bad zombie land anger management i mean that band was in everything from the twister 80s to twister was the best i called twister. it today. that was a cool song twister twister, twister was a cool sure. song that was the when Eddie, that's right before they broke up, Eddie and Sammy, you know, and then Eddie plays the whole instrumental at the end with the credits. It was badass. Hell, they were in Back to the Future. Yeah. I mean, every I, I like Super Bad when they shoot up the cop car 
It's With super Seth Rogen. Yeah. The coolest scene. With Panama. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That That's was my cool. introduction to Panama. That's when I was like, this song's badass. Add it to the gym playlist. And then I quit going to the gym so I don't listen to it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Will, not, Will, how can people follow you on social media, brother? Oh, look, look it up, man. It's all, it's all Will Turpin, Collective Soul. You'll find it. All right. Good stuff, man. Appreciate it. Look, I. I, I want to uh, have you on as, as much as I can, when I can, but this was special. Uh, you are my connection to Van Halen, never meeting Eddie Van Halen. Uh, did get to have drinks with Sammy Hagar. I had tequila with him in Los Angeles at the Hard Rock, uh, which that was cool to me. He's the only one I've ever met, but you you knew them all, and it was very special that you brought that to us on the Yet Come On Show, so thank you very much. Yeah, man. Thank you all, man. It's awesome. All right, take care, my brother. The Yet Come On Show with special guest Will Turpin. Uh, I'm Southside Steve, and of course, that's Brett Barney, along with the hardworking Tyler Maynard, brought to you by OxygenFinancial.com, Circle285.com for all your insurance needs, and Ridgeline Counseling, Dr. David Markwell. Special thanks to you, Will Turbin. <laughs>